Good morning, students. We are sharing two more questions, three more questions, question and answers in the plus two commerce subject. In this sitting, we are going to discuss sixteenth chapter consumerism. Sixteenth chapter consumerism. Now we are taking the two more questions. Now we are taking. Very short answer questions. Very short answer questions. First question: Who is a consumer? Who is a consumer? A consumer is one who consumes goods manufactured and sold by others or created by nature, air, water, natural resources, and sold by others. A consumer is one who consumes goods manufactured and sold by others or created by nature, air, water, natural resources, and sold by others. One who avails services such as banking, transport, insurance, etc., is also called consumer. One who avails services such as banking, transport, insurance, etc., is also called consumer. A person who buys any goods or services for consideration, which has been paid or promised or partly paid. And partly and partly promised, or under any system of deferred payment, he is a consumer. Who is a consumer? A consumer is one who consumes goods manufactured and sold by others, or created by nature, air, water, natural resources, and sold by others. One who avails services such as banking, transport, insurance, etc. He is also called a consumer. A person who buys any goods or services for a consideration, which has been paid or promised, or partly paid and partly promised, or under any system of deferred payment, he is a consumer. Give two examples for adulteration. Next question. Give two examples for adulteration: mixing of stones with the grains, mixing of stones with the grains, mixing of coconut oil with the palm oil, mixing of coconut oil with the palm oil. Papaya seed is added with black pepper. Papaya seed is added with black pepper. Coffee powder is adulterated. With tamarind seed, coffee powder is adulterated with tamarind seed. Next question: What is cavity tempter? What is cavity tempter? Cavity tempter is a Latin term that means let the buyer beware. Cavity tempter is a Latin term which means let the buyer beware. Similar to the phrase "sold as is," similar to the phrase "sold as is," this. This term, this term means that the buyer assumes the risk that a product fails to meet expectation or have defects. Similar to the phrase "sold as is," this term means that the buyer assumes the risk that a product fails to meet expectation or have defects. The principle of cavity tempter serves. As a warning to the buyers that they have no recourse with the seller if the product does not meet their expectation. The principle of cavity tempter serves as a warning to the buyers that they have no recourse with the seller if the product does not meet their expectation. What is cavity tempter? Cavity tempter is the Latin term that means let the buyer beware. Similar to the phrase "sold as is," this term means that the buyer assumes the risk 
that a product fails to meet the expectation or have defects. The principle of heavy tempter serves as a warning to the buyers that they have no recourse with the seller if the product does not meet their expectation. What is Kevet Ventiter? What is Kevet Ventiter? The principle of Kevet Ventiter, which means let the seller beware. The principle of Kevet Ventiter, which means let the seller beware, by which goods are covered by an implied warranty of merchantability, by which goods are covered by an implied warranty of merchantability. Sellers assumes much more responsibility. Sellers assumes much more responsibility for the integrity of their goods in the present day. For the integrity of their goods in the present day. What is Kevet Venditor? The principle of Kevet Venditor which means let the seller beware by which goods are covered by an implied warranty of merchantability. Sellers assumes much more responsibility for the integrity of their goods in the present day. Next question. Write a short notes on Consumer Protection Act 1986. Write a short notes on Consumer Protection Act 1986. Consumer Protection Act 1986 came into force with effect from 15th April 1987. 15th April 1987. This act referred in short as COPRA. This act referred in short as COPRA. The Consumer Protection Act 1986 seeks to prom protect and promote, seeks to protect and promote the interests of the consumers. The Act provides safeguards to consumers against the defective goods, deficient services, unfair trade practices and other forms of their exploitation. This Act provides safeguards to consumers against their defective goods, deficient services unfair trade practices and other forms of their exploitation. Write a short notes on Consumer Protection Act 1986. Consumer Protection Act 1986 came into force with effect from 15th April 1987. The Act referred in short as COPRA. The Consumer Protection Act 1986 seeks to protect and to promote the interests of the consumers. The Act provides safeguards to consumers against the defective goods, deficient services, unfair trade practices and other forms of their exploitation. Thank you students.